in the light of everything that's going on. Let's be intentionally faith-filled and hope-filled and not be driven by fear. How many of you have plenty of toilet paper? Whoa, I did not see enough hands. It's a good thing we're not shaking hands. Uh, we, I, I enjoyed yesterday, I went out and I, I, just, I just watched as people were coming into stores and they were totally, I just went to watch. I didn't need anything. I am prepared. I am well prepared. But it, it, was, it was fun to go watch and fun to see. But there is fear in our culture. And, and God has not given us the spirit of fear, but the spirit of sound mind. And judgment. And not only that, when Jesus left, he said, I'm leaving. And I tell you guys this all the time. And those of you who are believers, you know this. His Holy Spirit has come to live inside of us. And the fruits of the Spirit are alive in us. And they, they're producing something different than fear. But what God desires through faith in our lives is to give us a peace. Of mind. As a matter of fact, Paul points to it and he said, It is the peace that surpasses all understanding. In other words, it, you will have total peace, even in the middle of turmoil and concern. And I would also encourage uh, all of our church family to be sensitive to those, uh, those among us. Let's, let's, let's be caring for one another. Let's be followers of Christ. Jesus said that they'll know that you're my disciples by the way you love one another, which means you might even loan your mother-in-law a roll of toilet paper. You, 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 might, you might step to things that you never thought you were able to do. This morning, I really considered changing my message, and the more I thought about it, I just, you know, I felt, you know what, we just, we need to, we need to talk about this. And as a church family, I know we're going to be sensitive to what's going on, and, and maybe, the, maybe we won't be able to meet at some point, and, and at that point, we'll just continue to make sure that in every way, we can connect and have our services online, and uh, we're going to stream the message this morning and just really uh, open ourselves up to what it is God has for us. I'm launching this morning a message series, and we're going to talk about finances. We're going to talk about finances over these next three Sundays. We're going to look at our lives and the reality of the, 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 the fact that our culture, most of our culture, lives paycheck to paycheck. Most of our culture, most, most of the people in our lives, they walk through life with a backpack of debt on them, and they carry it continuously. And God really wants us to have freedom from that. He wants that to be off of us. Financial Peace University, by the way, if you're doing great with your finances or if you're dealing with debt in your life, either way, you want to take FPU. We have watched FPU transform lives over and over and over again. It has changed the way Karen and I do our finances totally change the way we do our finances. And God wants that kind of freedom. I'll talk a little bit more about that. And over these three weeks, we'll really dig into this. And generosity, I want to talk about this morning. Because we have a generous God. God is a generous God. All he ever did was give. As a matter of fact, in a broken world, and God knowing everything knew this would happen, but in a broken world, intentionally gave his son so that once again we could be in relationship with, so that brokenness could have a bridge between us and God again. And not only as followers of Christ do, do, do we end up in heaven because of accepting that gift, but as we go through life, we can have that peace, no matter what's going on, that transcends all understanding. Generosity. I, I, I really want to look at that this morning. In every way, in our relationships, John Maxwell says this. He says, we are either a plus or a minus in people's lives. You are either a plus or a minus in your spouse's life in your kid's life, in your family, in your friends. You're either adding to their life or you're taking away. 
And it's the same for churches and communities. A church is either a plus or a minus in a community. We're either adding, to the, adding value to the community or, or we're a drag on the community. And I, you know, I, I, was, I was thinking about this, and for, for me, right away, the, the illustration comes to mind are my parents. I watched my parents. I watched my dad be a plus in people's lives. I watched him year after year, day after day, the, the, his entire life, adding value to people's lives. I watched my mother in faithfulness for year after year after year. And I watched them together in ministry serve a church family their entire lives. And it was just so clear. It's, it's easy to see that. And most of us are really in that category. And you, you might say, well, James, how do you recognize someone who, who doesn't add value? That's kind of like when, when you're in a room and, and that person comes in the room and you go, oh, and that's your response. Oh, they, and then they start walking towards you and you go, oh, no. And, and you actually start praying. You, you, you're asking for God's help now. And, 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 and it's funny because John Maxwell says, he says this, he says, you actually start praying, oh, Lord, take me now, take me now. And then you get smart and you get a better prayer that comes to your mind, Lord, take them now, take them now. And, and, you, see, to, uh, to be a negative, to, to be a drag, we are either one or the other. Deuteronomy, in terms of generosity, says this in chapter 15, give freely and spontaneously don't have a stingy heart. Now, this is Camelback, so none of us here have a stingy heart. Now, don't wring your hands, but how many of you know some who does, right? Now, not us, but, but there are people out there who have a stingy heart. He says, the way you handle matters like this triggers God. The, the, whether you have a stingy heart or not triggers God. In other words, the way you handle money determines how God handles money with you. And then he goes on to say, you are God's blessing in everything you do. All your work and all your ventures. You know what he's saying? This is Moses writing in Deuteronomy. Do you know what he's saying? He's saying in every way, we are his practical application. When we look at this whole area of money, you and I are God's practical application. When the Bible talks about giving and generosity, it is always a matter of obedience. It's always in Scripture a matter of obedience. Do we value generosity? See, generosity is a value, but it's not a value unless it's valued. Unless we actually apply it, it it's, it's not really a value. The Bible says where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. In other words, those of us who really care about God, who he is in our lives and, and, and about our church, those of us who really care, we, we actually put our money where our mouth is. We, we, we actually give. If, if I wanted to know what things are important to you, we, we would just together open up your checkbook and it would become obvious what's important to you. Where your treasure is, your, there your heart is also. But that passage of Scripture actually flips both ways. It is a universal verse. Where your treasure is, if you, if you care about me, God says, you will honor me with what I ask you to do financially. But what it also means is that all of us, all of us are in the process of next steps. We, we all have next steps in different areas of our lives. If you're in the process of, in this area of finance, taking your next step, what the scripture actually means is 
As you, as you begin to give, your heart begins to grow and attach more to God and to his family and to his church. You see, it works both ways. If, if your heart is already in and you're just giving, gi- giving because of that, that that's one thing. But, but if you recognize, and some, we, many of us have a difficult time with giving, the whole concept of, of we're, we're letting go of something when we give. But Jesus said it's not really like that. This whole concept of as, as we give, he begins to change our heart. See, this is a supernatural thing. And Timothy, look what he says in Timothy. And this is Paul writing to Timothy. Paul's saying to Timothy, Timothy, I tell people this everywhere. I want you to tell this to people too. He says, tell those rich in this world's wealth right away. Almost every one of us in the room, here's what we think. Well, that's written for somebody else. Because he says, tell those rich. I'm not rich. And and we're all thinking, we're not rich. Here's the reality, church. If if you make $32,000, if if you make $32,000 a year, you are in the top 100 you are in the top 1% of the world's wealth. If you make $32,000 a year, you are a one percenter in terms of the world's wealth. You are at the very point, top peak point of world's wealth. Most of us in this room for sure are in top 2%. No question. He said, tell those rich in this world's wealth to quit being so full of themselves and so obsessed with money, which is here today and gone tomorrow. And that we know. It's here today and gone tomorrow. Turn to your neighbor and say, just turn to your neighbor and say, you need this. Go ahead, tell them. Tell them not to worry, not to, not to be fearful. You're going to be right here through this with them. You're not going anywhere. Look what he goes on to say. Tell them to go after God who piles on all the riches we could ever manage to do good, to be rich in helping others, to be extravagantly generous. If they do that, they'll build a treasury that will last, gathering life that is truly life. Three things this morning I want you to write down. Number one, generosity with our yes. We need to be generous with that word yes. We need to think. We need to think and because the way we think determines the way we feel, which determines the way we act. The Bible says in Proverbs, as a man thinks, so is he. If you think you can do it, you can. If you think you can't do it, you can't. As a man thinks, so is he. How we think will determine whether we succeed or whether we fail. If, if, we're, predis- if we're predispossessed to be generous, then, then we will more often than not say yes. Yeah, I can do that. And over this, these next three weeks, we're going to talk about two areas, really. One is giving, and, and the other one is retiring debt. And how do, we, how do we do our finances in life the way Scripture clearly points us to follow? In other words, we're, we're going to look at being wise and being blessed. Those, those are the things he has for us. In 2 Corinthians, Paul writes, God can pour on the blessing in astonishing ways so that you're ready for anything, more than just ready to do what needs to be done. He gives you something that you can then give away, which grows into fully formed lives, robust in God, wealthy in every way, so that you can be generous in every way, producing with us great praise to God. Great praise to God. We have an opportunity in our culture right now. We have an opportunity to to be generous in our culture right now, to to be peacemakers, to be willing to say yes at opportunities, to be willing to help others. 
See, if we're stingy with our yes, then no becomes our default. We drift into being pessimists as opposed to being optimists. Our default response will be, I don't think I can do that. I, 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 don't, I don't think I can do that. And, and, and when a situation comes up, we see the problems before we see the possibilities. B- because that's the way we're thinking. And we see the difficulties before we see opportunities. But if, if, we're, if, our gen- if we're generous with yes, if, if we're thinking in terms of I can, look what Jesus has to say about this. Je- Jesus says in Luke chapter 6, give away your life. You'll find life given back, but not merely given back, given back with bonus and blessing. God only deals in terms of multiplication. He doesn't add. He only deals in terms of multiplication. Giving, not getting, is the way. Generosity begets generosity. We will grow in our faith if, we will op- if we're open to becoming generous. You know, our natural tendency as we get older, and some of you are thinking about your parents, and this ought to scare you. If, 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 we're, if we're bitter as we get older, we will just get more and more bitter. If we're stingy, we will just get more and more stingy. If we're generous, we will become more and more generous. And we're thinking, well, wait a minute. If I'm more and more generous, I'll have nothing pretty quick. Jesus is saying, that's not how it works. He's saying, my ways are not your ways. My thinking is so much higher than your thinking. This This is the creator who created us, sustains us. We can meet here this morning or or maybe at some Sundays we won't meet here because of what's going on, but, but we will all know that he is God and he is our sustainer and he is our source. Giving, not getting, is the way to generosity. In our culture, we are so preoccupied with increasing our standard of living. And that's not a bad thing. And we should do that. We should want to better our lives and better the lives of our families. But I got to tell you, I'm I'm at a different place. I'm I'm at a place where I'm I'm comfortable with our standard of living. I'm I'm, I'm happy with our standard of living. And and do I want a Ferrari? Oh, yeah, I want a Ferrari. But I know me well enough to know after I get the Ferrari and I have it for a while, it just won't be that big a deal anymore. I really want, Karen and I, we, for us, so you, 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 as, as pastors and even our whole team, we give just like some of you give. We commit to tithing. As a matter of fact, we, we're committing to, we commit to more than tithing. I'm looking, I'm, I'm looking forward with that. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at increasing our standard of giving because you know what's at stake? A community around us that needs to live in the benefit of the things that you and I take for granted and live in the benefit of. When we leave this planet as followers of Christ, we're going right to be with him. We're we're, we're directly to be with him. And not only that, as we go through life, he is with us through life. And we live our lives in the benefit of that. But Jesus calls to us and says, "I, I want you to be my witnesses. And your giving and my giving makes everything happen on this campus and beyond. Number two, if we're generous, we will attract people to God. Our lives will attract people to God. I look at some people who are Christians, and if I were a non-believer, I might say, 
I don't know that I want to know your God. Because some of us can be stingy or we can be judgmental or we can be condescending. See, we're, we're either going to be stingy or we're, we're going to give. We're going to be generous or we're going to be judgmental or, or, or we're going to share in grace or we're going to be condescending or we're going to be loving. Those are the options. And the fruits of the Spirit will, will be applying in our lives and we, we will be attractive people to God. God gives us everything that we need. Look what Davy Blackburn, Davy Blackburn says this. He says, everything God gives us in life is everything that we would ask for if we knew what he knows. He already knows every response we're going to have, every need we're going to have, and he is God. Look what Jesus said in 1 Peter. He said, be generous with the different things God gave you passing them around so that all get in on it. If they're words, let them be God's words. If help, let it be God's hearty help. By the way, that's being salt and it's being light. Salt makes things better. Light makes things brighter. He says that way God's bright presence will be evident in everything through Jesus. And he'll get all the credit as the mighty one in everything. On course to the end of time. Oh, yes. And if, and if that's who we are, if, if we're generous, if we're generous we, we, our lives will be attractive. You, some, you, some of us can't put on enough makeup to be attractive. He, he will make our lives attractive. You automatically become attractive if you're generous. Uh, how, many, how many of you love hanging around stingy people? No. Can you imagine being a stingy person and, and as you get older, you get even more stingy? No, there's, nobody's going to be there to hang around you. Instead, the fruits of the Spirit, because his Holy Spirit comes to live inside of us, love, joy, peace, kindness, all of the fruits of the Spirit. Jesus says, come, follow me. He never said, clean yourself up and then come, follow me. He said, come and follow me. And the disciples did. And the first century church did. And for thousands of years, people have listened to his words and began to follow him. And following Jesus will make your life better and make you better at life, Andy Stanley says. And as we do it, he is changing us constantly because as we're following Jesus, he's the one we're focused on. And when we focus on him, he just makes us more like him. And this is a process that only he can do. My prayer for us as a church family, for us as individuals, help us become attractive to lost people. Help us, help us to, to, continue to continue to follow to the degree to the degree that people recognize that there's a change in us because of who we're following. And if we allow that, we will be attractive. The third point is we will receive more than we could ever imagine. More than we could ever, ever imagine. See, when you're giving, here's a principle. You got a shovel, and it's a little shovel. And God also has a shovel. And when you and I, with our little shovel, give, God, with his big shovel, gives to us. See, the more that you read Scripture and get familiar with what he's asking, it is virtually impossible to outgive God. You cannot do it. It cannot be done. And as I look at this and look at what he's asking, and our culture right now is driven by fear. 
as a church family, let's lean into faith. When, when, we, when, we, when we are generous, here's what happens. When we are generous, we're not selfish. When we're generous, we're not fearful. When we're generous, we're not letting anxiety run our lives. We're not letting hopelessness run our lives. But we're living by faith, and we live in opportunity to be his hands and his feet. Proverbs 24, Proverbs eleven twenty four says, the world of the generous gets larger and larger and larger. The world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller and smaller. The one who blesses others is abundantly blessed, and those who help others are helped. Steve Jobs, when they asked him if there was anything that he would do different, this was Steve's reply. He said, I, have, I would have put my trust in something other than money. He had plenty of it. I would have put my trust in something other than money. We talk about giving at church. So often you hear that church word of forgiving tithe. We bring the tithe. And that word actually means 10%. 10%. Early in Genesis, God lays this out to his children. He says, listen, out of all that you do, I want you to bring to the temple 10%. It started out being 10% of their animals and 10% of, of the wheat of the field and 10% of the fruits of their vines. And, ten, and, and, and then there, there, there came a point in time where that transitions and, and commodity began to transition in terms of coins. And from that point on, we, we begin to deal with it differently. We begin to deal with it with coins or, or money. Or, or, or now we live in a world where we just do it with our phones. But he, he, says, he said, listen, I want you to give me 10%. And there's a passage of Scripture that, that, that is just so clear with this. It, it's, it's right at the end of the Old Testament. And, and after reading this principle all the way through, you come to this place where, where actually the, the, the children of Israel had drifted so far from God. They, they just weren't even thinking in terms of God. And, and, and God, through his prophet, gets their attention and begins a conversation with them. And he says to them, you need to once again begin to do this. And then he gives it, then he gives it clarity. He, he just lays it right out there. He says, bring your full tithe to the temple treasury so that there will be ample provisions in my temple. Now, I've, I've preached this message for years. I've preached on tithing for years. And it is one of the easiest things for me to, to do. I, I'll just flat out tell you that. It's one of the easiest things for me to do because I learned the principle of tithing when I was a little kid, my dad taught me what it meant to tithe. And I, I recognized it and I started doing it. And God, through our life together, and even my life as a younger kid, has been so, so faithful. If I were God, I wouldn't have done it this way. I, I have shared, shared this so many times. If I were God, this is simple. If you're God, you can do anything. So if I were God, I would just make it so that the churches had a checkbook that always had all the money they ever needed. Finished. If you're God, that's easy. He didn't do it that way. And I don't know why, but he never came to me and asked me for my advice on this topic. <laughs> but we're going, and I have always gone in my life with the way he asked to do it. And look what he says. He says, bring the full tithe to the temple treasury so there'll be ample provision in my temple. And then he goes on and he says, test me in this and see if I don't open up heaven itself for you and pour out blessings beyond your wildest dreams. In other words, I will honor your giving in the area of finances, but not just the area of finances. I will bless your life in all different ways. 
And he goes on. He says, for my part, this is God talking, I will defend you against marauders. I'll protect the wheat in your fields. The vegetable gardens will all be protected. When, when you want fruit, you'll just go to the tree and take it off. It won't fall to the ground, he says, and rot. It, it'll, it'll stay there till you're ready to eat it. And then he goes on and he says, you'll be voted the happiest. The happiest. You'll experience what it's like to be a country of grace. This, for me, has, has been a way of life. Churches like ours across the nation, here's the statistics, about 20% of our church family, and our church is probably right in the same category, about 20% of our church family is actually giving at the 10% level. Can you imagine the impact we would have on our community if just half of us were doing it. But here's what I want every single one of us to understand. I don't preach this message for what the church can get from you. And it doesn't benefit me. It counts like it isn't even my source. God is my source. And I love it. I wouldn't change it for anything. I want you to hear this principle. I want you to apply it in your lives because I want you to live in the benefit of that. It's giving God the 10% that he asks for, knowing that the 90% that you have left has his unbelievable blessing and protection on it. And for years, people have said to me, James, I don't, I don't think I can afford to tithe. You will never be able to afford to tithe until you tithe. Because according to that passage in Malachi, it's the actual bringing of the tithe that changes everything because it is supernatural. I want that for you. I absolutely love the fact that that's a cornerstone principle in my life in obedience. Stand with me. Let me pray with you this morning. Father, these three weeks as we look at giving, as we stop and we focus on money and, and your plan in our lives for money, how to not have debt, how to choose to invest and how to grow our finances and, and how to honor you with our giving. How do we do that? And this morning, as we talk about being willing to be generous with our words, with our finances, with our lives, I pray for our entire church family, Lord, as we, as we hear these words and we have decisions to make and we will live in the decisions that we make. And if we say yes, we live with your blessing on that 90%. Do it in our lives, we pray, in your name. And everyone said, amen. amen.